Binary can also be a program that you have the source code to, and you might be thinking that you're running the program uh, from source, but actually it's a previous version, a previous generation of the program um, that you have the source code from. Uh, you're actually using a binary that was created earlier. Uh, that's a very popular thing to do. We do it with GCC, um, but many, any language, even languages that are, that are being created new today, like Perl 6, uh, are written in uh, the language itself. And we may only hope that there's another way to um, create the first six, the Perl 6 compiler. Uh, so, a bootstrap C. If we look at uh, Geeks, uh, the current version, 0.16, uh, it uses uh, 250 megabytes of opaque binaries that we use to build the whole uh, software distribution. Control. So that's a pretty small seat uh, compared to the rest of the um, whole distribution, but it's still pretty large. If you look at uh, more traditional distributions, uh, you see a sim similar set, but it, it's uh, almost like twice, three times larger even. And this is a trusted set of binaries <coughs> that um, uh, we are all taking for granted. 
And so what's a bootstrap? So a bootstrap is straps, the things that you see here are straps on a boot. And to bootstrap yourself is actually to pull yourselves up uh, using your bootstraps. So traditionally it's an impossible task. So what's it, what does it mean to bootstrap uh, in, in programming, say a compiler or, or, a, uh, or a kernel? You take the source or a program, you, you add something, and then you get the binary that you can run. Uh, and the thing is, this is something. What, what, what do we do there? So we use an ancient recipe. <laughs> so actually, you can think of the source code as, as a, a, you can think of the source code as, as milk, and you add a bit of yogurt, and you create more yogurt. <laughs> so actually, all we have to do if we want to uh, create uh, a next version of GCC is just use GCC. Uh, and we're done. <laughs> OK, so what does it mean to reduce the binary C of the bootstrap? Um, well, one of the biggest thing in the bootstrap is GCC and the tools it needs. So we simply replace GCC. Uh, this is the current uh, reduced boot, uh, bootstrap graph. We will use the upcoming version of Geeks. And I won't go into details here, but um, here is a first version of GCC, version 295.3, which is actually, actually built from source uh, by this chain. And MESS is one of the first binaries that we use. Uh, so unless we had most of this, uh, let's see. Yeah, so the reduced binary C bootstrap, the thing that's new here, that it um, has the binary C that we use to bootstrap these from 250 megabytes to about 100, that's it. So what would we want to do with um, well, it? Uh, Almost uh, at least 35 or 40 years ago, people realized that um, if you are using a binary that you cannot inspect, um, it's a trust issue. And Ken Thompson wrote uh, a great speech, an article, uh, a prototype of why you don't want to start with binary C. It's, it's, you shouldn't do it if you care about security or privacy. Um, And, uh, okay, let, let me go uh, uh, There are more people who advise against it. Um, why we, why we, why would we uh, not use a binary seat? Well, we used to put stuff our computers from sort in the 70s, 60s. We used to do it like that. Uh, it's very pragmatic if we don't use a binary bot, if we want to support new hardware. Um, then I have a kind of a joke. Uh, if you look at it, we'll, we'll, we'll go into that. Um, so security expert Bruce Snyder remarked that the trust and trust attack, um, as, um, as Ken Thompson described it, is um, not just an interesting uh, anecdote. It's becoming more relevant today. Um, and uh, Peter Herman says something similar. He says enterprises overlook or bypass uh, processes to ensure uh, they can trust the software. And he said, even says, you still cannot trust any software today. And David A. Wheeler, um, <coughs> who uh, um, got his PhD on diverse double population to address um, Bootstrap binaries. Thinks this is good idea. You mentioned the Thompson attack, but I feel like if I didn't know what a Thompson attack was, I wouldn't know from right here how you would do it to make it dangerous. Like, what what would somebody who is doing something malicious, what would they put in that binary? Yeah. So the question is, how does a Thompson attack work? Uh, how could uh, someone do something dangerous? Well. Uh, to go into technical details, I don't have the time, read it up. But the interesting thing is 
that if you use an untrusted compiler, and Ken Thompson showed it, actually you give out of hands all control of your computer. And it can, at any point in time, it could do anything uh, the compromised compiler writer. And they can put it into the next compiler too, that's a key part. Right. Right. And it's very hard to find if you use the Ken Thompson. And James Comey, who uh, was a former U.S. FBI director, in an interview he said, well, it's just people ought to take responsibility for, for their computing. So uh, people should do, uh, put tape on their monitor, on their cameras and on their microphones. So paraphrasing him, he says, I can say the FBI thinks we shouldn't, we shouldn't just trust binaries. We should use that And um, uh, Ludovic Cortez, who wrote a brilliant software distribution, uh, says, uh, well, the same. Uh, big binary blocks of code are non auditable, and using them uh, is a hazard, and our goal is to reduce them to a bare minimum. Uh, they did some research in the 70s regarding high-level language computers where you actually don't need a compiler but that they can directly run uh, like this or they can run C codes uh, but then that has been put aside because then compilers have you know, so mature and so advanced uh, but if we look at the statement for the AI maybe then high-level language computing would become more relevant again because then you can build stuff everything from source because there is no concept compiling your code, right? Okay. It's a long remark, this there's a remark question like, didn't we do much smarter things before and maybe even in hardware have a high level language? I think we're just reinventing the wheel over and over again and let's talk about that. So the interesting thing is that the GPL version 3 uh, um, allows you to distribute binaries. Uh, so the question is, can we distribute a GCC binary at all? And um, there are, uh, well, <laughs> you, um, you, you may be able to, uh, you may be allowed to do that if JCCC uh, for minus one, the, the one you compiled your program with, is a system library. I don't think so. Or if GCC minus one is a general purpose tool. Um, some people would say it is, but you also could argue it's a very specific tool, it's a C compiler, you cannot compile Python, it's not general purpose. But there's no another exception, and that is, you, you can, if GCC minus one is a generally available free program, and then lawyers can find out what program it is, but I I assume that it's about the binary because I cannot run some source code, right? So, then maybe, um, can we, is it legal for Debian to distribute GCC in Scratch? Well, maybe if it was legal to distribute the GCC in Jesse. And you can see where that goes. Um, luckily or unluckily for some, the GPL version 2 is more lax than that, so we're good. Uh, and why, you know, why would we do this reduced by me to see bootstrap? Well, for me it was also a big part inspiration. I was inspired by this 500 byte uh, hex zero monitor written by Orange J. Uh, you have, just have, should have a look at it. It's really great. It's 500 bytes and it can just reproduce itself, but also create a bit in, more interesting program. So we might be able to bootstrap our system 500 bytes and we can audit that. So, say we have GCC, which looks as yogurt. So how we remove the yogurt? Well, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> we eat it, right? So CCC tastes like yogurt, but is it really yogurt? Well, and, and 
So here's where we go from bootstrapping to bootstripping. <laughs> it turns out that the tiny CC developers put a lot of effort in making sure that TCC can compile GCC. And TCC is an order of magnitude smaller than GCC. Um, but yeah, is TCC the order? It's still a bit big, big binary blob. So uh, finally, there is uh, MESS and the MESS C compiler, uh, which is a really small binary blob uh, which can compile TCC. So the problem has gotten smaller. But I'm sad to say that MESS is still pretty proper. <laughs> So here's how MESSC works. Uh, MESSC is just a front is, is a scheme script that could be run on Guile dial or on the MESS scheme interpreter. Uh, and it's a C compiler. Um, it compiles a similar Hello World program to something that looks suspiciously like assembly. Um, and that's I, uh, actually all that MESS and MESSC do for us. Um, and then it will uh, invoke a program from, from the stage zero project from Orion's J, of which X2 is the first program. There's a program called the M1 macro assembler. So this is uh, M1 macro code. And it's assembled to this X2 code. And you can see that it's already pretty uh, uh, close to machine executable code. And there, then there's the linker stage, the hex2 linker, also part of the stage zero project. And we'll get our uh, binary program. So this is how it works. But of course, um, our ultimate goal is, um, well, as I presented it two years ago at Foster, when it was all a dream, is the full source bootstrap. Um, we won't stop before we bootstrap our systems from uh, nothing but source. So here a bit about the current stage of uh, stage zero. So when I started two years ago, uh, stage zero was only a, an inspiration. But now, uh, over the past two years, MESS has been implemented. And uh, I've been working very closely together <coughs> with the stage zero project. And this is the current state of stage zero and how it comes uh, together uh, comes towards MESS. So the lowest level that has all been done, there's an hex zero monitor and an hex assembler, which produce a much more, a, a, a just a little more capable hex one assembler. Um, and there's stage one, uh, the hex assembler, and the hex two assembler, uh, which can handle labels and do interesting things. Um, and just recent, recently, uh, a C compiler for a very primitive form of C has been uh, written in M1 macro. So we have bootstrap C compiler, which is it's really a, a, a C subset. And it can produce compile M2 planet, which is written in a simple version of C. Um, Maybe you can see where this goes, because um, now here is MESS, which is uh, currently it's a C program. But we're in the, uh, we have been working for weeks now to get uh, the C program, MESS, uh, uh, translated into M2. It's just a lot of work. It can be done, but we want to have a readable program, because uh, apart from having an all-source uh, bootstrap patch, one of the key things you is that it's auditable and understandable. Um, so uh, the red things are the, the stuff that is missing. Uh, we, we cannot bootstrap mass yet, so there's there's a gap. And there's a thing with the C library, which isn't there. But um, just imagine we have this done. Um, And after we have MESS, there's still a bigger C library we need for TinyCC. 
uh, it has been done, but it's it's uh, uh, in red because it hasn't been translated to that too yet. Um, and we need an even bigger C library to be able to compile the rest of you know. And there's this thing with bootstrap binaries. Uh, there are different paths where how we can do this. There are ideas to uh, burn all this code in one big chain of commands in firmware. But we are prototyping it currently in uh, you know, Geeks, which means you're running on a Linux kernel and you have to execute scripts. So in practice, we'll, we're looking at all kinds of binaries. The 130 megabytes that I showed you that we still have in the current reduced binary C bootstrap. So yeah, that's a question man, right now. Um, and up from, up from there, it's pretty much uh, done. Uh, this is all scripted in Geeks, uh, ready to be uh, merged in master. Uh, it works, and we have GCC 4.7 compiler, which builds the rest of the system. Um, yeah, so what's, uh, what's the next stage? I said we were aiming for the stars, but we do it in very modest, simple steps. Uh, so one of the things we're working on is, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the uh, national C2 and 2 translation. But another exciting thing, I think, is uh, the GASH project, which um, is a scheme implementation of all the utilities we need. You can think of it as busy box, but then a written in scheme, so we can if we run it a mess, you can see it as a source for a form of basic box that you can run. Uh, and that's work in progress. Uh, that's uh, already on the way. Uh, and we, uh, so the first step will, the first next milestone will be the, um, the scheme only bootstrap, with, which will hopefully reduce our 130 megabyte uh, binary seed by half we aim for 60 megabytes or so. And then uh, uh, reducing MESL M2, and uh, so reducing the MES binary seed will, well, hopefully bring us down another factor of two. We'll see. Uh, things that have been happening. Uh, yeah, I said, yeah, actually there were two projects uh, of implementing shell or bash in, in a scheme. There was a, a historical gash project and there was a geese project by Timothy Sample and the gash uh, project by Wolfgang von Beusikow and the project merged so we are ready to go forward, forward our, and we, we hope for a, a 0.1 release the coming month or the coming month. So I didn't do this alone. I did a lot of programming alone, but I had a lot of uh, uh, giant shoulders to stand on, and I had a whole lot of uh, help uh, from IRC in real life by a lot of people, which I'm really grateful for. So thank you. Sorts of things that could be done. 
if you're a Geeks developer or you want to become a Geeks developer, you can help getting this reduced binary boot, uh, binary C boot stuff into the main line. Uh, there's an R port underway. This is for x86 32-bit only, although we can, we, and we do bootstrap 64 bits uh, at the moment from it. So if you know R, please come and help. Um, yeah, there's lots of things. What we especially need is documentation and all it. And busy books? Um, yeah, Gash, we have the, our busy box in Scheme. If you, if you like hacking scheme or learning scheme, uh, we have a simplistic implementation of org and of set. We need more. Uh, why do you need ARM as you have GCC, you have a post provider, and so you don't <coughs> need to do anything specific to ARM, right? So the question is, why do we need ARM? Once we build GCC, we can cross-compile. That was discussed. Uh, it was an option, but um, if you're running ARM, you really don't want to depend on uh, binary uh, on, on stuff that was built on Intel or on Intel hardware. So I haven't talked about hardware, but the same story goes for hardware. So it, it's nicer if we. Yeah. Um, do you have funding? Do you have funding? So something like going to the EU and saying you have these uh, bug bounties. We have a solution for all our systems being insecure. So the question was whether we have funding. No, we don't have funding. Uh, interestingly, uh, I uh, applied for funding yesterday, thanks uh, to Piotr and to Elko. Um, but chances are we won't get it. So if you <laughs> if you're sitting on a big bag of money or uh, know how to get funding, but don't uh, and think this is a valid project, uh, come visit us. I think that uh, it's maybe the right period of time when uh, this can can uh, can uh, get grant for this because of security and. Uh, uh, Right. Yeah, so, the, so the remark is, have you applied for grants with the EU? EU because it should be possible with privacy and security. And the grant I applied for yesterday is uh, indirectly from the EU. I did apply for grants uh, in a previous life working on Lillipond. I spent two times three, three months of my life on it. Um, it's it, it, it has been wasted time until now, but if someone can help me with that, it would be much appreciated. Maybe you should ask the FBI. <laughs> well, they're watching, right? <laughs> so, if you run this on a CPU that has a Minix instance running as a management engine anyway, I, I'm sorry to ask that, that way, but what's the point? Okay, the, there's part, it's part, it's Discouragement coming from the audience. <laughs> they say you're running a compromised computer anyway, so why go through all of that work? You're totally right. So I'm only doing this to raise awareness and to make sure that people who are great about hardware address that problem. I cannot do that. Well, this sort of project is uh, I'm not sure if I can't see quite plain. It's an open source processor. So that's all the solution. I hear that people are working on that. I think it could be worth to port more MES to Power9. Okay. Uh, this power doesn't have a management engine. Okay, so uh, there's a suggestion to port MES to Power9 because it doesn't have a management engine. If you know Power9, please come and help port it. Um, the, the R port is well on the way. It took two days of effort to do uh, 80% of the work, so it's very doable to start working on it. Actually, uh, I have a very good experience with IDM, and I think that if you ask them, they, uh, they uh, uh, allocate some people to help you for it. Uh, because uh, one year ago, or one year and a half ago, uh, someone from IDM came to us to go back to the day, and uh, they wanted to do more to the IDM.